Maintaining the proper level of fluids in your car is crucial to its smooth operation. Among these fluids, you should think about frequently checking the coolant and adding more as necessary. It can be alarming though, if you observe that the coolant level gradually drops, does antifreeze evaporate and how much coolant loss is typical? We have the answers to your questions about why your coolant is low. After talking about whether coolant can evaporate and how much coolant loss is typical, we'll look at some possible causes for your loss. Lastly, we demonstrate how to resolve the primary issues. Does coolant evaporate? Since coolant is contained within a closed system, it does not evaporate. The cooling system's closed loop design prevents coolant from evaporating. If you observe that the coolant levels have somewhat dropped over time, the water in the mixture is most likely evaporating rather than the coolant itself. 50% coolant and 50% water make up the majority of antifreeze mixtures. Even if it's only very little, the water in the mixture will evaporate first among these, and if you notice a decreasing level, it's more likely that your car has a leak. How much coolant loss is normal? Over time, you might notice a slight drop in coolant levels, even if there isn't a mechanical issue with the cooling system. After six months, it's common to notice a decrease in coolant of up to 0.25%. That's roughly two or three ounces annually. You're most likely dealing with a leak somewhere if you check the levels and find more than this. To prevent any possible damage, you should have the system inspected rather than just topping it off. How to fix coolant loss. It is possible to fix whatever is causing the coolant to leak. Sometimes you might be able to identify the issue and resolve it on your own, and other times you might require additional assistance. To resume driving without leaks, adhere to these recommendations. Find and repair coolant leaks. You have to locate the leak before you can take action to stop it. If there is external dripping, it is the simplest way to identify a coolant leak. At night, you can put a big piece of cardboard underneath the car. You can figure out where it might be coming from by looking for a coolant indication on the cardboard by morning. Examine the area underneath the car to determine what is leaking. All of the hoses and clamps should be carefully examined because this is where wear starts. To find out what needs to be fixed, you should also examine the radiator and other cooling system parts. Test head gasket. Checking for a blown head gasket is not easy. Because of this, a lot of people decide to start by examining the symptoms to determine whether a head gasket failure is likely. For instance, coolant in the oil or vice versa will be visible when the head gasket is at fault. White smoke from the exhaust should also be visible. You can advance the diagnostics if the symptoms point to a blown head gasket. However, because these actions are risky, it is not advisable to take them unless you are an experienced practitioner. Take great care when following these general steps. Warm up the vehicle's engine. After turning off the vehicle, carefully remove the radiator cap. Replace the radiator cap with a funnel. Restart the engine. Keep an eye on the coolant circulation. The gasket may have failed if there are numerous bubbles. You might not feel comfortable performing this procedure yourself because hot coolant can spray from the radiator. If so, kindly proceed to the fourth step. Use a cooling system sealer. You might be able to buy some extra time by temporarily using a cooling system sealer or radiator sealer if your radiator, hose, or gasket is leaking. These products cover up any small holes in the system's walls by adding a chemical. These products are inexpensive, and using them is not difficult. Here are some fundamental steps to remember. Purchase a premium radiator sealant. Buying an unknown brand is not something you want to do. Rather, invest a little more in a product that will be effective. Pour everything into the radiator. Be sure to adhere to the label's instructions regarding the amount to be used. Usually, you'll need the entire bottle. If the coolant levels are low, add more. In addition, if the coolant levels are already within the normal range, there's no need to add or drain any. Turn on the engine. Allow the sealant to circulate and warm it up. 10 minutes is the ideal amount of time to keep the engine running. Avoid driving at night. After following the instructions, leave the car overnight. To allow the sealant to set, you should ideally avoid driving the vehicle for 12 hours or more. Repairs cannot be replaced by sealants. You may save some time by using a high quality sealant, but you should still have the cooling system checked and fixed. Contact a professional. You would be better off contacting an auto repair shop if you feel overburdened at any time during these procedures. Don't take chances if you don't feel qualified because diagnosing and fixing cooling system problems isn't always simple. For instance, fixing a blown head gasket is a challenging task that few people are equipped to perform independently. You should seek additional advice because of this. A number of variables affect how much an auto shop will charge for repairs. The cost varies according to the kind of vehicle you drive, the shop's location, and the necessary repairs. Generally speaking, unless the issue is complex, the mechanic should be able to identify it in no more than an hour or two.